Hiya folks, welcome to another video. We're gonna be doing a bit more on the uh, TGB moped. Time to clean some bits up, so I'll see you in a minute. Well, I've braved the coldness out here now. I've, uh, I've got Project Man doing some work in the other side, although he's just gone home for a bit to have a bit of lunch or something. But uh, I'll uh, show you what he's been up to, and uh, I'll also show you a few little things here which I've got. I got a letter from um, Steve, the transit camper, and he actually sent me a little present off me wish list last week. And he says, hi, Martin and Project Man. Great channels. I always give you lads a mention on my channel. Here's my sticker for the Wall of Fame. Uh, love to uh, uh, Sharon and the family. Take care. Steve the Transit Camper. So this is Steve's sticker there. There you go. I'll put that on the wall of fame in a minute. So thank you very much, Steve. Steve's channel's not been going so long, I think. I remember a couple of weeks ago when Steve first got in contact with me and he said he only had one subscriber, which he did. I think he's up for about 160 or something like that now. So thanks very much for that. And this also come off my wish list as well. Uh, it's some uh, auto sole uh, polishing paste and a couple of polishing rags. And this has got a little note with it saying, um, Hi Martin, I enjoy all your content. You're one of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Enjoy your gift from Ashley from AJP Garden Machines. Thanks, Ashley. Yes, I, I've noticed that you've got a new camera recently on your channel and it's improved it no end. And also your microphone as well, which makes a vast difference that you're not walking around and moving about with a camera. She probably was at the beginning, but now, as I said, I noticed your new camera that you've got and uh, the, the, the actual presentation of your video is so much better and you can only move forward with that. Thanks very much, Ashley. Well appreciated, my friend. And in fact, Gary's using my tube of this stuff at the moment. Let me just show you what Gary's up to. Right, he's got the fork legs stripped down now on the TZR, and I think he's been doing a little bit of polishing, as you can see there, look. We was gonna power the coat these initially, but uh, I think he's opted for the polishing, which means we're gonna to have to lacquer them as well once he's cleaned them all up properly. But uh, yeah, getting these apart was the devil's own job, and uh, I had to help him, because what can happen with these things is that on the bottom of the fork legs, you've got an Allen bolt which goes through there, which holds the internal fork damper in, which is uh, this bit here. And normally when you crack that bolt, they normally spin inside the fork leg. So if you actually go over and you want to see how to get over that problem, I know people who have had these stuck in there and looked down in the tube there and there's nothing to grab hold of in there right down at the bottom. And they've literally spent hours and hours trying to get them out. But uh, I did get them out for him and I showed him a little quick way of doing it. So if you want to see how we separated these fork legs, do pop over to Project Man's channel and... Um, have a look at that. When he, when he uploads the video, I'll leave a link in the video below in the video description as well. So as you know, I'm in the process of refurbishing the engine off of the TGB moped. I've given some parts, uh, just an engine enamel paint. Let me show you. This is the main engine bolt body there. This was really terrible, all sort of grimy and stuff like that. Ideally, in an ideal world, yeah, you'd like them vapor blasted, but um, I don't have a vapor blaster, so the engine enamel is the way I chose to go with them. And this is the other part of the uh, crank case which i'm just in the process of cleaning at the moment and you can probably make out there where this engine lug has broken off in the past and uh someone's obviously had the engine out of this before and i don't know how this would have happened and as you can see the repair on the inside there uh where it's been obviously tig welded i don't possess a tig welder so uh it's something i will be possibly looking into in the future but uh yeah that's been tig welded up before and uh, as I said, I, I was unaware of that, that this had been happened until I actually stripped it down. So that's where your crank sits in there. And obviously you've got the seal to go in there and also the new bearings to go in there. I'm in the process, as I say, of just clearing this up at the moment. And although you can't probably see it in there in the sandblaster, I need to change the glass plastic sheet on the inside here. But I'm in the process of just doing this case in there, getting it down. I'm going to probably end up powder coating that anyway. So I'm in the process of doing that at the moment. So if we come over here to the Wall of Fame, there's AJP Garden Machine sticker there. I think he's actually uprated his stickers for, uh, now anyway. So like I've uprated my Retro Restore one. So anyway, that's that. Let's take this uh, sticker off there and let's put uh, Steve the Transit Camper over here. I think it can go underneath my new sticker there. So I will leave links in the description below for you to check these two channels out. Uh, they're both, well, as I say, Steve's literally a brand new channel. So... Uh, have a look at his stuff and AJP Garden Machines. It's been going for a while. Um, and as I said, he's uh, 
basically fixing lawnmowers and stuff like that. So if you're interested in any of that or any of the other YouTubers there, do check their channels out. Not Scrap It Man anymore because Scrap It Man, as you know, is now Project Man. And I should really rip that one off, shouldn't I? But I don't think I will. It's all part of history. So I come to work in the workshop and he's taken over, look. Project Man. His little camera rig here, look. I'm now in the back room, so to speak, and that's where I'm gonna be working now. So let's go back around here and I'll show you what else we gotta do. So once I've finished cleaning these up, I've got the new crank here. As you can see, the new bearings and stuff. So that's brand new, this. I've had this for a good few years now. So we got the new crank to go in. We got two new bearings and we've also got the uh, two different size crank seals there to go in there. And there's also a smaller seal there. I'm not too sure what that one does at this moment in time, but uh, I presume these two bearings are slightly different in size. Yes, they are. Because as you can see, both of the uh, cranks are different sizes at either end sort of thing. So this one with a smaller hole will go on that end and the larger hole one will go obviously on this end. So yeah, all brand new, all ready to go back in. So uh, I've just got to finish clearing up now. So I'm gonna finish off doing that bit of sandblasting and I'll come back to you after that. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, let's dig that out of there. Was a bit corroded around the edges there, but uh, that'll powder coat all right anyway. But uh, very important to um, clean this out now, it's because it'll have all grit in it now, in the parts washer and blow it down to get every part of grit out of it. I've known people before when they've got a sandblast, to actually sandblast spark plugs, thinking they're doing a good job, and then to put the uh, spark plug back in the engine, start the engine up, and actually ruin the engine because the grit had stuck in the spark plug and of course when they put it in the in the engine all the grit's fallen out gone down the walls and actually destroyed the uh, the barrel and the piston so always clean your parts well afterwards so that's what i'm having to put up with here look yeah he's got his own bloody workshop but he's up here again look and he's turned me blinking lights off what are you doing oh look at this look there we go. It's coming up nice now. Look, I've shown him how to do it. I'm teaching you, mate. I've already shown him this anyway. But when you was in your blink dinner break. Dinner break. I was doing business. Business. Right. Okay. So I'm back on here now. Now, one thing I did notice on this case, in which um, I'm going to have to go with, unfortunately, is the um, one of the lugs at the top there had broken off. What's that? What you got in there? What's that? That's to keep you going. I like the way you turn it around and you don't keep the brand on show. Well, exactly, that's what I do. You're branding. I'm hiding it. <laughs> in an ideal world, I'd uh, TIG weld that and then obviously re-drill it again, but I haven't got a TIG welder. It's gonna be um, powder coated and just done up quickly, so I'm really not too bothered about that. So let's get this cleaned down. Now I'm gonna wash it down in the parts washer, clean it down, and then we'll uh, powder coat it. Right, so this has now been through the part washer, inside and out, and I've dried it off. So all I like to do now to get this chemically clean, you could put it in the powder coating oven, heat it up, and that pulls out the impurities out of aluminium, because this is an aluminium case. If it was steel, I wouldn't really bother about that because you don't really get no impurities come out. I'll just wipe it down with uh, acetone, but you can also do it this way. I've got a little blow lamp here, and uh, all I'm gonna do is just literally go over with the blow lamp, and this will pull out all the impurities you'll see a moisture line sort of chase away, who watch? There you go, can you see that? Where it's drying the surface off, look. And that's taking all the impurities out, look. So that's the reason why we do this on aluminium, because it's porous. There we go. 
So all I'll do then, I'll let that cool down and then I'll go over it with a, a lint-free cloth with some uh, acetone and then we'll powder coat it. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, should be cool enough now. Yeah, let's have a look on the other side. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I can hold it anyway. Right, let's get this uh, acetone. This cleans the surface, ideal for um, powder coating. I've got many videos of me doing some powder coating, so if you want to check them out, I use a home system which works very well. And this literally just takes off any of the leftover impurities, make sure you go around it. As you can see there, look, see that dirt that come out? As with all chemicals, do make sure you wear protection. Right, I think that's clean enough now for powder coating. We're gonna go black on this because it was black originally, so uh, let me get that set up and then we'll powder coat it. Got to be careful not to knock, the, knock this at all because uh, the dust just falls off if you ain't careful. Let's put that in there. There we go. So that's going to stay in there for maybe 15 minutes. I'm not sure. I'll have a look through there. The temperature's got to be up to 180 degrees centigrade. Obviously, when you open the door, it does tend to cool down. Then it's got to come back up again. And when I see the surface start to go a little bit glossy, then I'll start counting it. will be in for 10 minutes then because different thicknesses of metals obviously take a lot longer to heat up. You don't just want to shut the door, say, right, 10 minutes time, pull it out. That will work with thin metal, but not with thick metal. So you've got to watch it as well. Right, it's now about 18 minutes later. Let me just check the temperature on the part. Right, as you can see, the part is up to temperature. It's 178 degrees. This is uh, 180 degrees curing powder, this one. So it's okay now. So I'm going to turn the oven off. Let's switch that off. Okay, I want one glove. So we can open the oven now. And let's have a little look at it. Would be the wrong glove I pull out, wouldn't it? Now I'm not expecting it to be perfect because there was some pitting as you well know, but uh, we're just looking for it to be better than what it was. So I'm gonna get this out now. Let's go and hang it up. So there we go. Didn't do the back, didn't need to do the back. That's it, powder coated. That's where we had the pitting at the bottom there. So uh, we'll see that in a minute, but let's go and hang it up to let it cool down. Right, there we go. That's it, powder coated now. It's, uh, as you can see, I had the pitting down there, but uh, that, that couldn't be on. So I could have filled that, but I wouldn't want to bother. We're just looking at a, a tidy up job on this. So. Uh, there we go, nice and glossy now. TGB. Happy days, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna let that cool down now. So we're getting bits now, refurbished as you can see. So we're getting somewhere now. Uh, the next part is obviously to assemble the crank and put that back in the engine. And um, I'll probably be doing that and I'll spray this bit afterwards when it's all bolted back together. So I'll give all this one more coat. So uh, that's the plan for that anyway. So as you can see, uh, Scrap It, he's not Scrap It Man, is he? Project Man's gone now, he's gone home. So um, I've got my workshop back and it's nice and quiet in here now, but I'm gonna go in now, have a cup of tea. It's, uh, what's the time? That's not right up there, that clock. It's actually four o'clock and that says uh, two o'clock. Something wrong with that clock, I need a new one. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and thank you for our little gifts from our subscribers there. And don't forget to check out Steve the Transit Camper. Also pop over and see Ashley at uh, AJP Garden Machines. Uh, I'll leave the links in the description below for both of them channels. And thanks very much for all you other people out there who have uh, watched my other channels as well, Butler's Empire, and also I've started uploading some small videos to Retro Hacks. Again, not restoration videos, more little life hacks and stuff like that. That's what I intended the channel, intended the channel for in the first place. So thanks very much for your support on them as well. So I'll see you in the next video, and until then, bye for now.